Good morning guys. As you can see, we are in the car because we're about to head to our first location of the Hocus Pocus tour. I am so excited for this today because Hocus Pocus is honestly one of my top five favorite movies of all time. It's just so classic, so good. Anything that was made in the 90s is just amazing and especially this movie because it has to do all with Halloween. So we're about to head to our first location right now. We did have to hop in the car for this one and then I think we're going to head back and walk around to the other locations. There's six in total that we have today, so we're gonna show you guys everything that you need to know if you wanna go to these locations. Okay, so we are finally here. We're at our first destination, and it just so happens to be that this is one of the most iconic houses in the movie. We are at Max Dennison's house, which is the quintessential Hocus Pocus house. It's right on the corner of Shore Ave and Ocean Ave, and it sits right above this little beach area, uh, right on the bay here. So there's a lot of people bringing up their boats and docking here, and it's pretty cool. Make note that this house is actually someone's home, so please be respectful if you guys do come here and take some pictures. I wouldn't go up on the porch or up on the steps or anything like that. Someone actually does live here. For a Saturday, this place isn't crowded at all, which is great. There's only one other couple in front of us to get a picture. And just this house is awesome. It looks exactly like it did in the 1990s. So right now we're gonna go get a picture. And really quickly, we will link everything down below in the description for you guys, all the locations, all the addresses, so you guys can write everything down really easily. Now we're off to the second one, which is the school that's in the movie. Fun fact about this school, it was an elementary school back in 1992 and then closed completely after the movie. And in the movie, it's obviously depicted as a high school, not an elementary school. Just pulled up to our second location and it's actually on the same street as the Hawthorne Hotel that we showed you guys yesterday. It's literally right down the block and like I told you guys before, it's the school that's in the movie where you see Max talk to Allison for the first time. Max grabs his bike right from this fence which would have been a bike rack in the movie. Very awesome being able to stand right here where all of this took place. Right there are the doors where the kids come flying out after school is over <laughs> and they're spraying silly string all over the place so definitely a very iconic scene in Hocus Pocus. Directly across from the school is another filming location and it's this park right behind me and you do indeed see this fence in the scene that I'm talking about. This is when Max catches up with Allison right after school to tell her that he's sorry for embarrassing her in class and she hands him back his number because he says he doesn't believe in anything that has to do with Halloween or the Sanderson sisters. We are now at our fourth location which is another famous house in Hocus Pocus and it's actually Allison's house. The Yavos house. <laughs> so you really see the exterior of this house in the movie and that's when Max and his little sister come up and they look up and they're like oh my god. Yeah. Rich people must live here. And they say the famous quote that they would probably make us bob for apples or drink cider. This mansion was built in 1727 and it's gorgeous. It's actually operated now by the Peabody Essex Museum so you can do some tours. And the grounds are also very beautifully kept. There's some gardens in the back which we will show you. Right now we are behind the mansion and in the gardens and you can see the mansion, the exterior of the back of the building right behind me. And you guys, it is so gorgeous back here. There are so many different colors because of all the flowers that they have. And they even have some sunflowers over to my left that I will show you guys in a little bit. It's just so, so pretty back here. If you guys are interested in taking any pictures or anything like that, then we would highly recommend coming here. It is free. You don't have to pay to come back to the gardens, which is great. So definitely recommend checking this out. Here are the sunflowers that I was talking about. Look how big they are. <laughs> This is just such a great time to come to Salem. Everything, like I said, is very lush and green and in bloom. It is early September, so a great time to come here and check out this garden. And if you guys are interested in going inside the Ropes Mansion, then I would highly recommend checking out all the information and details online, 
we will have everything linked down below in the description. We were passing by Max Dennison's house and we saw the owners out there and it's this little cute husband and wife. They're elderly, so adorable, and just made the scene even more charming than it already is. I'm sure they love how many people come by all the time. <laughs> We're gonna say hi. They probably really enjoy it. I can't even imagine. They're like, this is our house, our famous house. Hi! <laughs> so this is where the famous scene of the Sanderson sisters singing on stage took place right here at Town Hall. This is in the heart of Salem. It's honestly so close to our hotel. It took us about 30 seconds to get here. They still use this Town Hall to this day and there are a lot of performances that take place inside and it is in fact open to the public. We weren't sure if this was the exact location of the, the scene in the movie. It looks like it wasn't because there's a lot of pillars in there that we didn't see. I don't remember seeing them in the movie at all. There are performances that do take place inside, so I'm guessing they have some type of stage set up. But in fact, they did use it outside of this building for a lot of the scenes in the movie. Downtown Salem right now is extremely packed with people. It is Saturday night and a holiday weekend. On Monday, it is Labor Day, so a lot of people around. We're gonna try and get a seat at Bella Verona. Hopefully, if it's too crowded, we might just do takeout because we just wanna try and be as safe as possible. We need to get our pasta fix at Bella Verona. It is by far the best Italian restaurant we have ever eaten at. It's so cute and quaint, and they have wine to choose from and all that fun stuff, so hopefully we can show you a little bit of the menu. So really quickly before we eat, I think we're gonna pop into the Hawthorne Hotel to show you guys what it looks like inside at Christmas. They have a beautiful poinsettia tree that we loved last time we were here. But this place is known to be very spooky, so if you guys are into ghosts and all that fun stuff, this is just a great place to stay. They definitely gave this place a facelift. It looks so beautiful. Brand new carpeting throughout, especially in the lobby, and all new sofas and couches, so it looks so, so good. We would highly recommend definitely staying here now. It did look a little bit dated before. They also have a bunch of different restaurants in the Hawthorne Hotel and they have a bar called Tavern on the Green, which reminds me of New York City. So I absolutely love that. It's very oaky in there. It looks very inviting. So a great place to have a drink. Over here, there's an awesome picture of the opening day, what it looked like outside in July of 1925. And then Dave just pointed out to me that there's a tribute up here and a time capsule, and it's gonna be opened on their 100th anniversary in July of 2025, which sounds really, really neat. And this is a rare thing to see, some pay phones. Do they work? <laughs> Dial tone? No. Yeah? No. No? Yes. Wow, so one of them. <laughs> no? Yes. Don't make calls? Make calls. Want to have your collect? No. The ballroom is really pretty as well. This honestly reminds me of the colors at the plaza in New York City. Just very elegant. I'm just so happy with what they did with this place. And we weren't even expecting to see an update like this, so this was definitely a great surprise. So much history in that hotel, just like many of the hotels here in Salem, and especially our hotel, The Merchant. Yeah, we stayed right up in that room, actually. Right there. Where? Did we? Yep. That one, the second floor? We stayed right up there, in one of those. <laughs> I remember, because we could see exactly right where we ate across the street which is our favorite place to eat in Salem. So you most definitely need a reservation for Bella Verona, and if you wanna get takeout, it would be an hour as well. So we're trying to find somewhere else to eat. Tonight, we decided to come here because we weren't, we didn't have the reservation for Bella Verona. Uh, this is right off of Front Street right here, and behind me is the town hall, actually, uh, that was used in the Hocus Pocus movie. So we are gonna get some New England lobster and some fish and chips. It's really good and recommended by a lot of locals, so can't wait for our stuff to come out. I went with the lobster casserole. It looks really good. And Dave went with the fish and chips, and we also got some onion rings and tater tots. So we cannot wait to eat. It's about 8.30 right now, so we are starving. And definitely afterwards, we're gonna head over to Maria's Sweet Somethings and grab some ice cream. Those fish and chips look humongous. Yeah, it's haddock. <laughs> It's what? It's haddock fish. Oh, is it? Yeah. Wow, I've never even heard of that. 
like in a fish and chip. Yeah. Maybe it's like the original, the best. We will see. It looks, looks good. Here, let me just open it up real quick to, to see. Oh, it looks like, looks really, really good. Steaming hot. Ready? Mm-hmm. Actually, I'll just try that piece that fell out. See what the fish tastes like. Amazing. So good. Fresh. That is a good fish. Really fresh, yeah. And the tartar sauce is really good too. Perfect. This is awesome. And not too expensive. There's a lot of lobster in mine, and I think this is around $26, which isn't bad. You do get a side, and I think Dave's was around 19 bucks, so yeah. pretty reasonably priced. Yep. So like I said, I went with the lobster casserole, and I know that probably doesn't sound too appetizing, but look at these chunks of lobster. Baked to perfection with breadcrumbs on top. Looks really, really good, and it is piping hot. We also went with some onion rings that look really good as well. This is what you want to put in your lobster bisque, if you could. <laughs> they always give you just like little pieces, which sucks. Like you want a whole lobster in that lobster bisque, and this is what you want. Full lobster, really good, nice and garlicky, and the lemon is a great touch as well. Ice cream is always a good idea, so we're ending the night with a little treat after that dinner. We are full. I went with chocolate chip and rainbow sprinkles. And then I went with the uh, lemon and raspberry sorbet. My ice cream <laughs> is dripping. Yeah, you gotta. All over the place, I need you. You always help me. <laughs> he always makes it perfect for me. <laughs> it's such a hard task. <laughs> But don't eat all the sprinkies. <laughs> so I think we're gonna end the night here. We will see you bright and early tomorrow morning. We are checking out of the merchant tomorrow and heading over to a different hotel that we're gonna show you guys. Tomorrow we're going to finish up the Hocus Pocus store at Pioneer Village. And then we are headed to Hammond Castle, which is really, really cool. I'm so excited to see that. Me too. There's so much history there. And we're coming back here and doing the Witches Museum, which is gonna be fun too, because we haven't really gotten into a huge part of the witch history here. Um, but I'm sure they're gonna have a ton of information for us there. So it'll be an exciting day tomorrow. Stick with us. Good night, Treventures. Good morning guys. It is Sunday today and like we promised we are off to do the last location for the Hocus Pocus tour. It's only about five minutes away and then we're off to a castle for the day which we are very excited about. One of the great things about this castle is uh, John Hayes, the, the actual American inventor. He's like the father of radio control. He did all these missile guidance systems and all that stuff. This is his baby. He built this for his wife in the 1920s. And he had a collection of medieval artifacts that actually inspired John D. Rockefeller to have his own, which is now housed in the Metropolitan Museum of Art, which is insane. So this guy was, awesome. a, yeah, he was a very special guy. And um, we're gonna see his house. So I think the castle is like an hour or so away. We're not really sure. We're gonna look it up on the maps, but right now we're headed to Pioneer Village. So we'll see you guys in a few minutes. Look how cool this is when walking in. You really feel like you're being sucked back in time to the 1600s, which I love. Right behind us is Thackeray Binks' house that you see in the beginning of the movie. He's actually sleeping in that house right there and he wakes up frantically realizing that his sister Emily is missing. And this is the window where he looks out when he lays up in bed and Sarah comes flying on her broom right past the window. <laughs> this is my broom. But usually we could go in there, but it looks like they have it blocked off. This is the only house on property that we cannot go in. Usually they do have this window open. We've seen in other videos and stuff like that, and you can take a peek inside, but right now it is boarded up. Thackeray Binks wakes up and runs straight out this door and over to this house right here, which is actually Elijah's house. You see him stop and talk to him and tell him to call my father, get my father, and some of the others. We have to find my sister. So 
he runs right around this building and over to the field which is actually that here on property that's the magic of hollywood right there that was filmed at a different location right now i am in the house next to thackeray banks's and it's really really neat in here you can see a bed here to my right so this is the types of beds that were back in the 1600s and then over here they have some of the foods that they would have been eating and all of this really neat stuff <laughs> really really neat and then over here is their fireplace and where they would have cooked their meals it just takes you back in time completely this is one of the best locations in the hocus pocus tour i absolutely love it here because it really takes you back in time to the 1600s we 100 percent recommend this and we hope you guys enjoyed the six spots that we went to so now we are off to the castle so excited i think it's about an hour away and i'm gonna take my broom <laughs> so we're gonna hop in the car now so we'll see you guys in about an hour